In this video, we'll go over the AFC East. We'll discuss each team's chances within the division, getting the order of finish, as well as if any team can make it in as a wild card. We'll also discuss a couple of players' fantasy value in the division. All of that, plus how to win a very valuable prize, coming up next. Hello, everyone. I'm Eric Lee. And I'm Michael Wiley, and we're the Fantasy Football Consultants. Michael, today is the AFC East, the basically the personal home normally of the New England Patriots, who won 11 straight years up to last year when the Buffalo Bills took it. Yeah, these Buffalo Bills, I tell you, they are on their way up. You've got to love that fan base for the Buffalo Bills. Be happy for them. Could this be their year? I don't know. Let's talk about it. All right, well, let's first talk about what happened last year. All right, so last year, as you mentioned, the Bills had a nice uh, division win. They ended up 13-3 and three after kind of dominating this, this division. The Dolphins ended up 10-6, and six, the Patriots were 7-9, and nine, and the Jets were 2-14. And, and in projecting the odds for 2021, the lines makers do like Buffalo to repeat. They are minus 150, meaning you have to actually put down $150 just to win 100. Miami is next at plus 325, meaning risk 100 to win 325. Right after them is New England plus 350 and the New York Jets plus 2,000. And let's check in with the New York Jets dog. Oh, he's still very depressed about last year and the odds for this year. All right, we'll talk all about each of those teams. We want to remind you guys that Michael and I are breaking down each of the divisions. If you want to see any other division, the links will be in the description. And if you want, Michael, I can't believe we're doing this. We are allowing an opportunity for our viewers to meet us and do a show with us. So how does it happen? It's simple. Just go into the comment section, pick the order of finish in the AFC East, and state whether you think anyone will make a wild card. Anyone who gets it perfect will go into a pool, which will be randomly drawn, and we'll have one winner from each division to join us. What a prize that will be. <laughs> uh, <laughs> don't say it sarcastically, Michael. It's a it's, it's quite a treat. Well, I think we're excited to have those folks yeah. on. So I, so please participate so we can get some, some exciting participants into our, uh, one of our shows. All right. So let's start talking about these teams, Michael. And we'll start at the top of the division last year, the Buffalo Bills. So guess what, folks? There was not a whole lot of changes with the Buffalo Bills. And I guess that's good news, Michael, when you're 13 and three, I guess you don't need to do any changes. All three coaches, the head coach, the offensive coordinator, and the defensive coordinator are all back. All starters on the offensive side and the defensive side are back with one exception. And that's at wide receiver two, where Emmanuel Sanders will replace John Brown. I don't see if we're just talking about next year, a whole lot of difference between those players. So I think it's the status quo. And like I said before, I think the status quo is a good one. Michael, I want to comment a little briefly on the fact that the big leap that um, Josh Allen made, and I think he, he, he proved he's the real deal. Yeah, no, real impressed with this kid from uh, basically my home county here. Uh, he showed that he wasn't just a big arm and a tough guy, but that he could be accurate. And that was something that he did not show in that first year. He was able to push the ball downfield. He obviously, Diggs had a fantastic season because of how good of a season he had. And what that was a move a that was, Michael, to get him from Minnesota. That, that really worked out. Yeah, no, it was huge. And he's this combination between speed and a possession receiver. I actually think the change from, from uh, Brown to Sanders is an upgrade because I think Diggs gives enough of a speed uh, situation. And with the quickness of Beasley, Sanders is a really good possession receiver. And so I think it does strengthen the team. I think Knox is just going to continue to get, uh, sorry, Moss is going to continue to get better. Uh, and so 
the one knock I have on this offense is they didn't really do anything to improve the offensive line, which is okay. So I think they can make some improvement there. Uh, and the defensive side is they're not that strong of a defense. And that's really where they need to make some change, I think, to be more than just a division winner. All right. I know they have their eyes on the, the Super Bowl. They, they've got that, you know, playoff experience. They got that playoff win. Now they need to take it to the next uh, level. Well, to win the division, one team that's standing in their way is the Miami Dolphins. Yeah, so Miami has lost their guy, Fitzpatrick, because they're going to stick with Tua uh, Tavagaloa, or however the heck you say his name. I just uh, say it, Tua, Michael. That's okay. all I say. They're going to stick with, with Tua. They did add some wide receivers with Will Fuller coming over after his uh, suspension at the end of last year. And adding Jalen Waddell from uh, from Alabama, which I think just makes things better for Tua, who obviously has used to throw into that guy from when he was a, a young buck. I want to ask you a question on that, Michael. Uh, they got these two great deep threats now that go along with Devontae Parker. But Tua didn't complete a pass last year for greater than 40 yards. Do you think he is going to develop to be able to fully utilize those deep threats? Well, he better, right? I mean, that is what they were banking on. I think he, you know, he he did he did push the ball downfield a bit when he was at Alabama. Um, you know, he's this lefty thrower who could wing it, but um, you know, he's still unproven in the NFL. I think uh, we don't know. The jury's out. I really like Brian Flores, but Brian Flores is a defensive guy, and 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 they do have a strong defense. I think they added my my uh, Pleasanton mate Javon Holland out of Oregon who I think will help things on the defensive side. You're right. It comes down to Tua. How good is Tua going to be? Because this offensive line is not great either. Yeah. No, no it, it, they really uh, struggled to run the ball all last year. And they lost uh, left guard Eric Flores and uh, the center, uh, Ted Karras. So this is, this is a team that I think has some question marks uh, on the line in their ability to run the ball. And in my opinion, at least a question mark at quarterback, uh, you know, um, I would say they did make such great leaps last year, going from five and 11 to 10 and six. Um, what do you see about the, the, the defensive side of the ball though, Michael, I find this defense has been one, I'm going to say a nice word opportunistic <laughs> because they led the league in 29 takeaways. But we were, they were in the bottom half in points allowed and yards allowed. So the question is, is all those takeaways something that can be uh, counted on? Or was that a little bit more fluky? Well, obviously, I mean, to some extent, takeaways are, are a, a reflection um, of the position you put yourself, your team into by how you run things on the offensive side of the ball or how close you're keeping games. Um, yeah, you can't count on turnovers always being in your favor. But if you do look at some of the defensive teams that have historically done well, there's a mentality about it. And I think that's a mentality that comes from Brian Flores. There's, this really isn't a group of stars. It's just a bunch of guys who know how to play together. So, yeah, I'm a little bit worried. I think you make a good point. It, it really was turnovers that helped them jump from kind of middle of the pack to, to towards the top. Uh, we'll see if they can repeat that. All right, New England Patriots are the next next team for us to talk to, uh, talk about. Michael, there's no way to sugarcoat this. This offense last year, New England, was bad, awful. Only two teams, the two New York teams, uh, scored less touchdowns uh, than the New England Patriots. Um, here's the big question, Michael. Who is going to be the QB? Now, the good news is whoever the QB is, they've got some brand new shiny toys and weapons to, to throw to. Uh, two tight ends were brought in, Hunter Henry and Johnu Smith. They even brought in Nelson Aguilar and uh, Kendrick Bourne. Michael, who do you think? You're Bill Belichick. I anoint you, Bill Belichick. Who do you start the season with? Do you start with Cam Newton, who at times have been inaccurate, but can run the ball really effectively, are their first round draft pick Mac Jones? Well, I think Mac Jones is the guy to go with in the long run, but I, I can't imagine that they're going to start him right out of the gate. I don't, I don't really see him as somebody who's ready on day one. 
Uh, he he a bit was a bit of a game manager. Yes, he had a really good senior year, but he was a bit of a game manager at Alabama. Um, and Cam Newton, you know, I think they, you know, the fact that he's on the team means they're going to start with him. It's just uh, that's you know there there's really not a way to have Cam Newton as a backup quarterback. He's either your guy or he's not on your team. And so I think the upgrade at tight end will help immensely. I think that's an area where Cam Newton is like to go historically is to the tight end position. Um, but yeah, I think it's going to be a rough year if uh, for them at the quarterback position. I will say they do have one of the best offensive lines in all of football. And they added Trent Brown, you know, he came back to the, to the the Patriots here and you know Bell Pelichick has always done a good job protecting his quarterback so maybe that is a sign that they're going to be going with Mac Jones by week five or six if, if yeah they win games for him but I agree with what you how you answered my question meaning I do think Cam Newton's gonna you don't bring in all these uh high-priced offensive weapons and start with a rookie um in my opinion so I think Cam Newton will get this, the, the starting not at the beginning of the season. How he plays will dictate how long he holds on to it. And um, they still have a great defense. I mean, you know, all of these veterans are still there with Gilmore, McCourty, Van Noy, Hightower. They're going to, they're going to have an impact on, on how they, you know, do things on the defense, on the, how they're going to manage the game. So, you know, yeah. we'll see what Belichick can pull out of his hat, right? Yeah, and a few of those guys opted out last year. So um, no one was hurt more by, uh, by uh, opt-outs due to the health environment than the Patriots. And, Michael, is there, even with last year, is there a better coach in the NFL than Bill Belichick? Well, I think there's a lot of people that were happy to see Belichick struggle last year. He's obviously shown over time – that he is a genius, but Hey, we saw Tom Brady get one without him. So, you know, maybe, maybe it wasn't always all Bill Belichick. No, it could very well be that it was Belichick and Brady. They both are awesome. Um, so, all right, let's talk <laughs> about the New York jets. Yeah. Michael, so me- I'll let you tell us about them, but I'm going to have a poignant question for you. If uh, you don't cover it, go ahead. Well, I'd like to say that the most impressive thing they did this year this year was draft Zach Wilson out of my alma mater, BYU. That's what I want to talk to you and about. I, and I do think that he – we'll talk about fantasy in just a minute. I think he will put up some numbers with his legs uh, and his, his accuracy. But I actually think the number one change that the Jets made was the change to bring in Robert Sila, Sila or however you say his name, out of out of the 49ers. I, I yeah. really respect him. I like defensive coaches. We've seen them have a huge impact on teams as they've changed things around. They do have a bottom 10 defense coming in. Um, but uh, I, I'd like to think that the Jets are on the mend because of the change at the coaching position. Yeah, you, I think you nicely – uh basically said that you didn't like adam gase so, <laughs> so the uh, uh new coordinators as as well look no offense scored fewer points gained fewer yards than the new york jets so um in comes uh your byu quarterback uh zach wilson so i want you to i know you followed him at byu is this a guy I'll give you three choices. Is this a guy that's going to be a star right away? Is he going to be a star, but it's going to take him a few years? Or is he never really probably going to be a star in the NFL? No, that's a good question. I, I really don't know. I mean, I, I have a hard time believing that he's going to be an enduring star, partly just because of his size. I just don't see how he can survive the injury bug with how light he is, especially with one of the worst offensive lines. Uh, in the league and he likes to run the ball and that's something he relied on heavily at BYU and, and that this is not a league where you're going to want to run a whole lot you can get away with it a little bit but unless you have the moves of uh, you know some of these other you know speedsters I, I just don't know how you can sur- survive it they did bring in Corey Davis from Tennessee uh, I, I'd like to believe that Herndon's going to finally be what he had always promised to be and they they added Tevin Coleman which I'm not sure he's going to make a huge impact, but he is a great pass catcher. So that would help uh, Zach Wilson. I think Zach Wilson will put up fantasy numbers, but I'm not sure he's going to be an enduring winning quarterback in the NFL. 
and you don't you don't see him as an immediate star for sure this year I think he can, you know, he can be accurate. And as long as he can handle the speed change from, you know, BYU's competition last year to the NFL, I think he will complete passes. Um, but I don't think he's going to turn around the Jets' offensive woes in one season. Yep. The Jets have missed the playoffs 10 straight years. Spoiler alert, I'm going to say make that 11. <laughs> Michael, why don't you tell us what's your prediction for the AFC East? Well, I think we're going to see the exact same result as we saw last year. I think these Bills are going to uh, wipe the floor with this division and kind of breeze to a division win. I think the Dolphins will be right there on the cusp of, of, of being a playoff uh, uh, team, depending on what happens in some of the other divisions. And I think the, the Patriots will pretend for a few weeks and then less, uh, unless Cam Newton returns to form, which I just don't see happening. Um, they will not make the playoffs and the Jets will end at the bottom. Yeah, so I'm similar but not identical. So I, I have uh, the Buffalo Bills winning the division again. I just have some concerns about Tua. I have New England second and I have Miami third and the Jets fourth. Due to where I have it configured in other divisions, I think Buffalo is the only team going to the playoffs. So I have Buffalo, of course, winning the division and qualifying for the playoffs that way, but no wild cards for me in this division. So if you haven't yet, we want you to join the FFC family. It's easy and it's free. Just smash that red subscriber button, followed by the bell icon so you don't miss any of our content, including all of our division preseason division breakdowns, which again, the links are in the description. Until we see you in our next video, take care and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.